So here's the deal. I'm driving my 2016 Honda Pilot down the road and I'm hitting the brakes and they're pulsating. I got 86,000 miles on this car and I figure, well, my rotors are probably warped. So I decided to go ahead and replace my pads and my rotors and film it for you guys. So there's my car right there, the 2016 Honda Pilot. That right there, that's Brian. He's gonna help me out with changing my brakes. Plus this is his house, so he's got the jack there to help jack it up. But before we get to that, here we go. These are the items that we're gonna be using today. There's the item numbers for the rotors. I got them on Amazon. There's the Evolution brake pads. I got some disc brake quiet to put on there so they don't squeak. And, uh, and I guess you could have got this other brand too if you wanted to brake or caliper grease, but I think one of them is gonna be fine. So the first thing you gotta do is take off that tire and you got this special key for the special lug nut, the lock, and uh, you gotta take that one off and then you go ahead and take all the other lug nuts off. You wanna keep that tire on the ground while you're taking out those lug nuts because thing's gonna spin around on you. So after you get all the lug nuts out, you lift the tires up off the ground and you put these jack stands underneath the car. It's got that little spot where you can put it nice and perfect. Got a jack stand on the other side over there too. You can see it there with the red arrow. It's because we're gonna do both tires at the same time, changing brakes on both fronts. Okay, so now that we got the tire off, we got the rotor showing with the caliper. Can't see the brake pads yet because they're underneath the caliper. So you're gonna have to get back there and get those bolts out of that caliper right there. There's the two bolts. And in order to get them out, you're gonna have to use that 17 millimeter ratchet set to get those out oh there's brian going to work getting those 17 millimeters out of that caliper so we can get it off look at me i'm just sitting there filming him he's doing all the work i feel kind of guilty about it but he's doing a good job All right, after we got those bolts out, we couldn't really get the caliper off, it was super tight. So Brian grabbed some of these pliers and he started just wedging it out and then kind of just kept wiggling it and it came off. So that might happen for you too if your car is, you know, like four years, five years old like mine. So a lot of people, they like to take that caliper and they put it on top of the rotor, but we're gonna be taking the rotors off. So came up with this idea of just, uh, using the bungee cord up there and hooking it to the suspension so it's out of the way. So there's your brakes, your disc pads, so you want to go ahead and you're going to get those off. So they're going to be kind of rusty and gross. You can just pull them out. There's some pins on there. You're going to replace those in a second, so no worries. Take it all off. Now my pads still had a lot on them. Look at that. That's like half on them still, but like I said, it was pulsating, so my my rotors were all warped. And you can't really replace the rotors with rotors without replacing the pads too. So there you go. Okay, now we have to take off these bolts that are in the back of the remaining brake assembly. Those are 19 millimeters that you have to use, and uh, it was super tight. You might have run into this problem. We were pounding away trying to get that bolt to move. It took us a long time, so we eventually uh, got a metal pipe and put it onto the end of the ratchet and uh, gave us some more leverage, and it finally moved a little bit, and we got it off. So it took a little bit of doing, but you put a little elbow grease into it, and it eventually comes off. All right, so there we go. Now there's something really important here. This screw right here, just a regular Phillips screw, be careful with that. That could be super tight trying to get that out and you don't want to strip it because if you strip it, well now you're in big trouble. You gotta do a whole bunch of rigmarole just to get that out of there. So be careful with that because that's the next thing you're gonna take out. Okay, so 
Take a look at what I did. Yeah, I stripped it after that big long talk. Yeah, I stripped it. So what Brian did is he pounded in a screwdriver with a hammer to get it in super tight. And then he used that wrench to eventually pry it out. So we kind of got lucky. So hopefully you don't strip it like I did because that was a real pain. Well, and then once you take that screw out, you take the rotor off. You might need to pound it a little bit with the rubber mallet to loosen it up. That's fine. And then uh, just kind of wiggle it off and it comes off. And it's always heavier than you think it's going to be. Whew, those things are heavy. Okay, and then you take your brake parts cleaner that you can pick up in any auto parts store. And you're going to spray down the rotor to get any residue off of it. And then you just wipe it down with the towel. Now look how pretty that brand new rotor looks compared to that other one. Whew, it's going to look nice going out of the car. Now when you're putting it onto the car, you want to make sure that hole where that stripped screw, or, well, mine was stripped, hopefully you don't strip yours, goes in the same spot the other screw was so you can screw it back in. There you go. Now, there's the brake pads. I'm going to get this little bag of all these little goodies you're going to be using too to replace. And look at this, what came with the brake pads some brake lubricant so i didn't even need to buy that brake squeak stuff but well it happens so now wait wait a second look at this mess make sure you're not like us to make that big old mess clean your workspace it's so much easier to work when you have nothing in your way so don't make the mistake like us look at we still have a whole bunch of stuff laying around well on this other brake assembly there's a uh, these little metal pieces that were all rusty and they came in that bag with the new brake pad so we decided that we're just going to take those rusty pieces off and put the brand new ones on the other ones probably would have still worked fine but figure might as well change them out since we're changing everything else then you start just replacing everything else just going backwards putting everything back on the way you took it off so you put these bolts back on to put the brake assembly back on. Those are the 19 millimeters. Brian's doing a nice job. Okay. After you get the brake assembly all screwed in and tightened up, then you're going to get your lubricant out. And you're going to put it in the spot right there and any other spot that metal meets metal so it doesn't squeak. So that spot up there also. And you're going to want to put it on the back of your brake pad right there. So I'm going to use my disc brake quiet, even though that free stuff came with my brake pads. But... I bought this so I'm using it all right so I'm putting it down there in the bottom I'm putting it up there on the top I kind of like how it's got that little nozzle there too it kind of gives me a way to you know wipe it up there you don't need to put on a ton just enough so you know it's not squeaking and then you're gonna put it on the back of your brake pad now look at this I just put way too much on here two big goops you don't need to do that so I'm going to rub it around on the back of that brake pad. Now check this out. Brian used the lubricant that came with the brake pads. It's white. Look at that. It's perfect. Just a little bit on there. That's all you need. You don't need to make the big mistake I did and just glob it on like that. Although it's not going to destroy anything, but it's kind of like a just a mess. So then you take your brake pads and you, you put them in there. The same way you took them out and then uh now look at this look i put so much lubricant on there brian doesn't even know how to handle it it's so goopy sorry about that brian so then once you get it in now there's some holes that are kind of hard to see but you remember where those clips were and you're going to have some clips that come with the brake pads that you're going to put onto the brake pads Brian's gonna do here in a second oh no there they are I'm pointing them out 
There's the hole. There's a hole there and a hole there. And then the same on the bottom. Hole there and hole there. So you're going to take those little metal clips and you're going to pop them in those holes. And it's going to make a, the pads kind of pop out a little bit, to, but don't be afraid. Now, you're going to have to put the caliper onto those pads. And these two pistons right here, those rusty little looking circles, you're going to have to push those back in before you slide the caliper back onto the brake pads. And the way you do that is you use one of the old brake pads and you put it on top of the two pistons and you use this C-clamp and you just tighten it home so that the pistons become flush with the caliper. So you push them in all the way. And then you're gonna take your caliper and you're gonna slide it right on. But guess what? This is where it gets tricky because there are the lubricant on the brake pads makes the brake pads wanna pop out all the time because it's so slippery probably because I put so much lubricant in there. And look at that, they fly right out. Well, that's kind of a two-man job. So I put the camera down and I helped Brian and we put it on together. I held the pads. Actually, I think Brian held the pads and I held the caliper and slid the caliper on. And then we tightened it up. Actually, this is me tightening it up. A little tough holding the camera with one hand and tightening it with the other, but got the job done. So after we tighten it all up and put our wheels back on and take the jacks out, that's it. That's all you have to do. But don't forget to pump the brakes after it's all said and done because when you push the brakes the first time, they're going to go all the way to the floor. So make sure that you push the brakes a whole bunch of times before you start driving. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell. All right. Thanks, guys.